Halleluja. Hallelujah. Blessings to you, brothers and sisters. It's your watchman. Brother Ramon. End time messenger. One of few that gives the opportunity that the Most High God has given me opportunity to be able to come into his vineyard and give a message in this hour. Well, we are in that hour. And the Father is speaking. Amen. He is speaking. And he's always been speaking since the beginning of time. But we're living in an hour right now where the Father is speaking even more in this hour. And I ask you, do you have an ear to hear what the Ruach HaKadash is saying unto the church in this hour? Hopefully my audio is sounding pretty clear and coming in good. Hallelujah. But I want you to understand that persecution is coming. Yes, persecution is truly coming for every believer that claims that they're following the Messiah. I say this because we're living in an hour right now and we're living in a world where so many believers, quote unquote Christians, quote unquote followers of the Messiah, are not really preparing their self spiritually, let alone physically, but spiritually for the hour and for the time that we're living in. Because the hour and the time that we're living in, it is so precious, it is so key for us to examine this flesh this first beast that we have, that we have, that, that our spirit, that our Ruach HaKadash, that our spirit, that it dwells in, that we're going to have to examine ourselves. And then he says, choose ye this day who you will serve. So my message today is found in the book of Revelations, chapter 1, 7, chapter 1 and verses 7. Well, not verses 7. I believe it's right in the verses 9. This is talking about the church. This is talking about the seven churches. But my point is today that there's a church of the church of Philadelphia. I mean, the church of Locadacia, a lukewarm church. But there's another church that I believe that is in this hour. And it says, write down, write this letter to the angels of the church of emphasis. This is a message from which the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and the one who walks among the seven gold lampstands. I know all the things you do. I have seen your hard work and your patience, endurance, he says, I have seen your patience and your endurance. How much patience, how much endurance do you have? Because especially the world that we're living in right now, people don't have enough spiritual endurance to finish this race that we call life. When I'm out evangelizing the street preaching, so many people go against this word, go against the Messiah. They go against the Messiah. They go against, what do you mean, preacher, they go against? Because they don't have the patience. Do you have the patience to endure hardship, lack of food, lack of sleep, worrying about everything that is going on in the world, worrying about where your next vacation is going to come from, worrying about all these things that holds the seven stars in his right hand, which is power. And the one who walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know all the things that you do. And I have seen your hard work and your patience endurance. I know that you do not tolerate evil people. You have examined the claims of those who say that they are apostles, but they are not. See, many people would say that they are believers, but they are not. Because inwardly they are ravaging wolves. 
Inwardly, they are apostles. Inwardly, that they say that they understand, but in all reality, they really don't. Inwardly, they would say that no preacher, I'm a good Christian. I'm a good man. I'm a good woman. I do things that are good. Hmm. I know all the things you do, he says. But you are not. You have divorced. You have discovered they are liars. He said, you are apostles, but you are not. He says, I have discovered that you are liars. God knows the liars. God knows the ones that are tainting the sheep. God knows the ones, Elohim knows the ones that have came in and crept in and said that they were prophets and they lied to the people. God knows the Joel Osteens. God knows the ones that, that are trying to fake it till they make it, making billions and millions of dollars off the back of the saints, of the ones that truly are set apart, that are really, truly trying to serve God. God knows the liars. Amen. And you have patiently suffered for me without quitting. I want somebody to know today. God knows the ones that have went against you, that prayed ill against you. But you hung in there. You continue to finish the fight. You continue to stay the course. You continue to know just like that still water behind me. He says, blesses the man in Psalms 1 and 1. Beside the still waters, he says, I shall restore thy soul. Amen. He said, I will leave you in a path of righteousness for his name's sake. Amen. Yea. Through you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You don't have to fear no evil. But I have this complaint. Listen to what he says. But I have this complaint against you. You don't love me. Or each other as you did at first. See, at first, many of us love the Messiah. You love going to church. You love your brother and your sister as you love the Messiah. You loved him. You didn't mind praying. You didn't mind fasting when you first dedicated your life to God. You didn't mind. You loved him. Amen. But he said, you don't love me no more. Look how far you have fallen. Do you know how many people have fallen away? I talk to people all the time. They say, preacher, I have fallen away. Preacher, I have stopped serving God. Preacher, I stopped doing this because God didn't answer my prayers. Oh, I lost a loved one. Oh, the job stopped. Oh, this, oh, that, oh, this, and oh, that. You stopped loving them, the one that loved you first. Turn back to me, he says, and do the works you did at first. Turn back to me. When everything was broken, turn back to me. When you couldn't find your way out of the hardships of life, turn back to me. When the CV was in the world and nobody else could, you could never leave out of your house and all you could do is probably just read your word and pray and seek his face and worship. Turn back to me, he says. And if you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from his place among the churches. I will take my glory. Amen. I will take my power. I will take my authority away from your church. I will take my authority away from your house. I will even snatch your soul. Mm. He says, don't fear the man that can kill the body, but fear the one that can kill the body and throw the spirit where? Into outer darkness. Into hell. Mm. But this is your first but this is your favor. You hate the evil deeds of the Nicolaitans, just as I do. Anyone that has an ear to hear must listen to what the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. To everyone who is victorious will give fruit from the tree of life. In the paradise of God. Do you want your name written? 
in the Lamb's book of life? Or do you want to hear depart away from me? I never knew you. Listen, we're not in the hour to continue to play. Do you not know we're getting ready to, it was a seven years of plenty. Now we're coming into the year seven years of famine. You can see it in the land. And it's first of all, it's the famine of the word of God. That's the famine. The famine is the true word of God. Not this cotton candy. Not this knowing who you are and all this other stuff. You should already know who you are. You've been walking with God 20, 30, 15, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. You should know who you are in God if you're studying your word. Now it's time to eat the meat of the gospel. Now it's truly time to understand where are you going? Who are you serving? Why are you still backsliding? Why are you still doing it the way that you want to do? What's your why? Why do you not give Messiah all of your life? The apostles of old had to be persecuted, hung on the cross, or you say the stake, died in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeshua had to be the sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice for the sinful nature of this world. But what are we doing in return to say that we're thankful? Have you did what he said in Romans chapter 12? Lay down your life. Presented your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto Elohim, which is your reasonable service. El deny, el deny, it is our duty. So I pray that this message found you in peace. I pray that you know you do not want to be like the church of Sardis, the church of Ephesus, I'm sorry. You don't want to be like the church of Ephesus. Then we're going to go in the next church. Then we're going to talk about the next one in the next one until we get all seven fulfilled in this series of the seven church. And I could have went even deeper into this, but I don't want to make videos too long. I want you to have a clear understanding that he says that there is only, there's one thing that you have kept. You have kept my word. Will you keep his word? Will you deny him? He says, go back to his, go back to your first love. Go back to the way that you was. Come, come back to me. Don't walk away from me. Don't deny me. Don't stop serving me. Don't stop doing the things that you've been doing at the beginning. When you loved me, when you prayed, when you read my word time and time and time and time again, that's all you did. Stay the hallelujah. He said, stay there. My God today, stay there. And don't look back like they did in the times of Sodom and Gomorrah. So be blessed. This is your watchman. The shofar has been blown. We're coming into that hour. King coming. Shalom.